Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I've got my friend Jimmy. He's been on here before. He fabbed up a grill guard for me and helped me with the wiring on my cab and a few different projects. But he's brought his 1025 over, and we are going to add an extra valve kit so that he's got third function. And I recently got the Precision Manufacturing Add a Grapple, and I described that in the video as the least expensive way to add a grapple to your tractor. And I've done it several videos using that. It's been really handy. They asked me if I wanted to demonstrate this, and I said I happen to have a friend who doesn't have third function. The valve kit is, is really pretty simple. It's a hydraulic diverter. So we have a little electrical pack here with a push button switch. And when you push the button, it operates a valve and diverts hydraulic fluid from your curl dump function to your open close function. They give you a variety of fittings here. Then you've got a valve body that actually diverts your hydraulic flow and a mounting plate. You can clamp this on wherever you decide to. Okay, step one was to disconnect the battery. We've already done that. Step two is you take this mounting plate and mount the valve body to it with these three and a half inch long bolts. The kit came with two three and a half inch bolts and four four inch bolts. The shorter ones are used mounting the valve onto the mounting plate. Then the other four used to sandwich around whatever part of the loader you want to put it on. You could put it down here, you could put it up on the vertical mast. We decided right here on this arm because the existing curl and dump hoses should reach. Now that the valve is mounted in place, the next step is electrical wiring. And it's really pretty simple. The most complicated thing is you have to find a spot on your tractor that has power when the key's on and doesn't when the key's off. Or that's best practice. So Jimmy's found a spot up at his fuse box where he can put the hot wire and a ground wire. Then it's got a built-in fuse. So the first wire you get connects to your power, and then it's got this plug right here, and it's got a button that turns your diverter on and off. Then you'll plug this connector into the next wire, and that next wire just connects to the valve body. So it's, it's really pretty simple that you're just routing this along the frame of the loader and connecting these to power. So here's the button right here that activates the diverter. He's got the wire run down through here, comes under the floorboard, back up, and into his fuse panel right here. Uh, every tractor will be different, so how you need to run yours is going to vary. Uh, coming out of that, at the bottom, we have this right here, which plugs into the, the valve. This section of audio didn't come out very good, but I'm just explaining that we changed our mind on the placement of the diverter. Rather than putting it down towards the end of the loader, we're going to put it up by the mast because that allows us to use less hydraulic hoses. Okay, so we just slide this protective sheeting down. We're going to use the curl dump function to divert from, which is the top two lines here. So we'll be taking the top two lines off of right here and putting those onto the diverter valve. I thought we were going to finish this in one day because I was going to just take some extra hoses that I have off a of grapple and I've got some other hoses down there that I used to use in a different application, but the threads don't match up and so I'm going to have to go to a hydraulic shop and have a little short hose made that comes from here to here and I'm going to have to get an adapter or possibly another short hose for here. So I'll have to wait till the hydraulic shop opens tomorrow before I can finish this. But for you guys, I'll be back in just a second. All right, so I went to a hydraulic shop and got the hoses and fittings we need. And we're gonna mount this right here so that we need less total hoses. Now that we have the valve bolted on where we want it, the next step is to take the curl and dump function lines off because that's where we're getting our hydraulic flow. 
Now for these, rather than getting a hose, I'm just going to connect these direct. And to do that required a fitting. So these are two different threads. And I just took my valve in with me and a picture of my connectors and they were able to set me up. And one of them is flat face. The flat face is coming off of your lines because that's what's on our lines. It has the seal in it. The, the ones that came with the valve have the seal in the female end, so this side does not. So we will just be screwing these on here. There's no thread tape or anything needed because they both have seals in them. And like I said earlier, the reason we moved the valve up here is to buy fewer hoses because, you know, no reason to spend any more money on it than we have to. Okay, so now we have hydraulic flow coming into the valve. We have electrical connection to the valve. We just have to connect, I believe, the top lines down to our implement. And this side, I believe, goes to here. I'm going to double check the diagram, make sure that the side ones come back to our original uh, tilt and curl cylinders. That is how it works. The, the flow comes in this side and out this side, unless you divert it. When you divert it, it goes to the top. Now these hoses don't look long enough, but I think if I use the elbows, they're gonna just reach. So I got a 12 inch hose here. If you put this where I did, you probably want a 18 or 24 inch hose. So now we've taken our hydraulic lines off of the curl and dump, put them onto the diverter. Out the other side of the diverter, we returned that hydraulic flow right back where we got it from. So we've completed the circuit, but when we activate this diverter, it will now send fluid up here. So I've got two five foot hoses. One end threads in there. The other end has female couplers that match the couplers on my atagraffle. And we're about ready to hook up an implement. I'm just going to hook these hoses up down the loader with some zip ties. how I ran these lines it's really temporary now he may want to leave them this way but it's not my tractor so I'll let him decide that but I ran them right next to the main hard lines for the loader zip tied them there zip tied them right down here in the center and the excess cable I zip tied to his supply lines Obviously there are better options than zip ties, but if you are going to use zip ties, definitely get the black ones. The white ones uh, fade in the sun and break real easy if they're outside. If you're interested in purchasing this extra valve kit or this precision manufacturing atagraffle, go over to agfolks.com. They sell a variety of tractor attachments and parts and use code ROCKHILL5 for 5% 5 off your order.
For the purposes of this video, I wanted to keep the testing pretty limited because it's not my tractor, I'm not used to this tractor, and it has no ballast. So the lift on this right now is going to be pretty limited, but that brush pile right there is no problem. So precision manufacturing at a grapple, precision manufacturing extra valve kit, it's a good do-it-yourself, relatively inexpensive way to add third function to your tractor. I appreciate you taking time to watch. I'll put links over here to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.